afternoon, everyone. I am Reverend Mark Hughes. I am the executive director of the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance. And these folks here, standing behind me, uh, stand with me uh, to come out today and announce the fifth, the fifth annual uh, First African Landing Day here in Vermont. The fifth annual First African Landing Day here in Vermont. Yeah, I, I want to uh, you know, just share with you a couple things on the onset. I'll come back and talk to you more later, but there's a, uh, quite a few speakers that we want to get through, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, hold back a little bit here on the front. Um, there is an intersection of the, um, the 1619 Traveling Exhibit as well as the 400-Year African American History Commission uh, that I personally found uh, in 2019. And this would emerge into uh, what is now, and it has been proclaimed by our governor as Vermont's uh, first African Indian Day. <clears throat> so this is very much about uh, 1619. Um, and uh, what I would add to that is, is that one would be hard pressed to find a day in history that has more consequential and profound impact on this nation and indeed this planet than the 20th day of August in 1619. So, First African Landing Day focuses on learning more about that day. It also focuses on its legacy, which we experience every day. So it is with great honor and pride uh, that I stand before you today uh, to uh, reintroduce you to First African Landing Day, because we're not going anywhere. So we'll be back next year with First African Landing Day. That, that where First African Landing Day was born is very important to understand is because it is, it is at the, the impetus of First African Landing Day has everything to do with the legacy of slavery. And the work of the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance has sought for the last several years to address just that otherwise referred to as systemic racism. In all of our work across outreach and education, uh, policy, community engagement and support, and cultural empowerment, what we stand together to do today is, is to bring our flagship event of cultural empowerment uh, that seeks to address systemic racism uh, to the forefront yet again. Now, here's what's really interesting about this event today. Is, is that we are hosting a press conference here from the Richard Kemp Center. The Richard Kemp Center is, it, it serves as the cradle, if you will, of all cultural empowerment for black folks here, by black folks, for black folks, in, in the community of Burlington, for the purpose of addressing systemic racism, and that is what we know to be those disparate outcomes across all social determinants. Here we deliver programs and services that have been otherwise inefficient, ineffective, or just non-existent. Here in the Richard Kemp Center, this is what it's here for. The first time in history that an organization has created a, an entity like this in the community of Burlington. We are here. This is us. This is our house. And finally, before I introduce the director of the Richard Kemp Center, my wife, Christine Hughes, I would like to also add to you that of significant importance in triangulating on this event today is the presence of the traveling exhibit for 1619, which came right out of Old Point Com 
comfort. Where the white lion landed the, night, the 20th of August in 1619, that museum, that is standing directly behind us. This is the traveling exhibit for 1619. It is here in our house on this day. not the best, uh, Christine Hughes. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, everybody, especially the youth. I'm so excited about all the work that they've been doing. Make sure you come out tomorrow to the Intervale Center, rain or shine. Come on down. It's going to be a great day. And we're so proud of what has happened with the Richard Kemp Center. And as Mark said, this is our house. My brother Vincent is always saying that and we really mean it we're not just saying that because it sounds good this is our house if there isn't something here that we're already doing that meets your needs come on over let's sit down and talk about it because we have the capacity to create new programs and activities so i just really want to invite the community out tomorrow for first african landing day and to come by the richard kemp center and check out what we're doing thank you Oh, and tonight is movie night. Bring the kids. Yeah. So, um, one of the things that I thought would be awesome today is that we could introduce some of the folks who are who, who've been here, uh, who've been supporting these efforts, and who do the work every day, who are doing the work before, who are doing the work now, and I know they'll be here with us next year. So um, I know some of the programs and services that we've been supporting and, and implementing throughout the community, uh, some of it has had a lot to do with our culture uh, in our communities, has had a lot to do with artistry, uh, art, because after all, that's where American culture comes from, is black folks. So, here, here, so here's, I'm here to introduce you to one of my favorite folks in, who, uh, who supports, upholds, and represents uh, the culture, the black cultural arts here in the city of Burlington. Uh, that is my sister, Omid J. Um, yes, I'm Omega Jade, and I am proud to be a part of this community, um, the Richard Kemp Center and the Racial Justice Alliance. I've been a part of this for a little over a year, and I am now proud to say I am a community partner with them. With that being said, uh, I'm inviting you to join us tomorrow because my Black Artist Market will be uh, one of the festivities uh, that will be a part of Vermont, uh, Vermont's first African Landing Day tomorrow. So, come show, show, show. come show some support, get some food, I got candles, and other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I might even perform, so yes, please come, you're all invited, you're welcome. I'm just looking around to see who else is behind me. Uh, you got you got to look behind you sometimes in this work. So listen, um, what, here's what we're going to do is, is I want to hear we want to hear a little bit from one of our great great partners, community partners who supported us, uh, who who just um, they st stood hand in hand with us in the work and continue to stand hand in hand with the work that we do, uh, particularly as it pertains to our youth and in our community. Uh, it's a it's a rough road inside inside of these school districts across. The state, we have a partner in the Burlington School District. Uh, Sparks, can you talk to us? Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say thank you to Mark and Christine and their team. Uh, a center like this has been long overdue. I've been in Vermont since 1992. And as we think about racism and dismantling of white supremacy culture, we've never had a place like this for us, for black people, for black people, black people doing things for other black people, and especially our black youth. As we think about community partnerships, first and foremost, we have to think about those agencies that are committed to the work, committed to serving the needs of our youth. As I think about the school district, we have a long way to go as we think about dismantling white supremacy culture and anti-racism. We have a superintendent that is now committed to that work, Tom Flanagan, 
who I would say has been one of the first superintendents that we have had that we have gone this deep and dismantled white supremacy culture and anti-racism because our schools is one of the places that it starts. The school is committed to dismantling white supremacy culture and anti-racism. As I think about the first African American landing day, it is something that our students need to fully understand, our white faculty and staff need to fully understand, and they need to embrace, and we need to embrace this in our teaching every day. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, speaking of the schools, one of the one of the things that um, I thought was important because we've had here in the Richard Kim Center over the last six weeks uh, just a group of incredibly dynamic youth, uh, a couple of white young men, uh, I think about five uh, black young women uh, who were, I think, previously actually leading over at the Racial Justice Academy, and they joined us for the duration of the major part of the summer here as interns and um, just have began some of the most uh, incredible work uh, that you might imagine uh, from, um, from, a, from a perspective of wellness. We've been doing a lot of work uh, from the perspective of wellness, and there's one individual who sat in with me on our, our television program, uh, Juxtaposition, uh, and uh, he's also here with us today, and I'd love to hear from him. Uh, we, have, um, we have Aiden R. Gray with us this morning. I would just like to say that the reason I'm here and why I chose to work over the summer is because in the middle of school there was a lot of stuff that's happening, like a lot of stuff like um, systemic racism that leads to systemic racism that just wasn't being fixed in the school district and wasn't being addressed and I decided to do something useful, useful with my summer. So I signed up for Summer Race as an Academy, and that led to the opportunity to work with the Summer Race or the Racial Justice Alliance. And that led to a pretty productive summer with more that I've accomplished than I've ever thought I could as a student. And <laughs> so, um, so yeah, definitely excited about having just all of the youth in uh, this summer. It's an awesome time. As black folks, we understand, uh, and, and we, as black folks, we stand united. Uh, we stand united in recognizing the profound impact of our struggles throughout history. Our journey has been marked by underlying determination, unyielding determination, courage, and an unbreakable spirit that has propelled us forward. We honor those who came before us, who endured the horrors of slavery, segregation, and systemic racism. They bore the weight of oppression on their shoulders, yet they never succumbed to despair. That is why we're here. Uh, our ancestors and their unwavering faith and resilience, it paved the way for our progress. They fought for their freedom, risking everything to forge a path to liberation. Their sacrifices, their blood and their tears watered the seeds of change that continue to grow within, within us today. Their struggles were not in vain. They fortified our spirits and ignited a fire within us that refuses to be extinguished. That is why we are here this year. We are saying, through the fire, as a theme yes. for 2020. <laughs> New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church is a partner and a friend of the work of the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance, and I am a minister at New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church. It is the tradition of my faith to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly in the presence of the Most High God. I would, I would be remiss uh, if I did not invite my sister, Adeline Robinson, to say a few, uh, a few words. Thank you. 
Um, I am very, very humbled and very pleased to be a part of such an amazing journey. Um, I am truly grateful for um, having the at first African landing celebration here in Vermont. Uh, we are proud that this is the fifth annual um, celebration. Um, and us at New Alpha, we are very, very pleased and happy with the work. And we will be a part, so come down to the Interbell Center, hear all about uh, what New Alpha has to offer and who we are that's still in this community. Uh, we appreciate um, um, everyone here at the Richard Kent Center and all of the staff that's here, um, especially my dear sister, um, Christine Hughes, who is also a part of New Alpha. Um, so we are just grateful and we thank you all for being a part of what we have to offer and celebrating with us and standing with us. Um, so continue to um, do the work. Thank you. with us knowing that our strengths they they flow their strengths flow through our veins their resilience courses through our hearts reminding us that we too have the power to overcome any obstacle in our path from generation to generation the torch of hope has passed down lighting the way for us to march forward in our youth the vibrant and resilient souls who carry the promise of a brighter future tomorrow, they embody the strength and the potential of our community. They bear witness to our history, and their shoulders are touched by the struggles we have faced. But they do not falter. Instead, they stand tall, fueled by the fire that burns within them they are the architects of our future, the ones who will continue the fight for justice and equality. I do have a member of the board of directors here present with us today, and we would love to hear a couple remarks from Deacon Roy Hill, also a member of New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you, Reverend Mark, <clears throat> Executive Director, Vermont Racial Justice Alliance. Thank you for the beginning. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for this powerful moment in history that corrects history, that is impactful more today than yesterday, but impactful. Symbolism. The, the literal reality. Reverend Mark spoke first. Reminds me of scripture that speaks to the reality that without education, people perish. We're about education, we're about the reality of what has happened in terms of the history of this country and the increased effort micro and macro aggression to deny that reality. This country rests on our shoulders. Rests on the shoulders of men and women who went before us. Rests on the shoulders of boys and girls of yesterday and today they stand and we see them here symbolizing truth and that empowered talent and gifts which have come down to history to sustain this country. And then there was the executive director, another literal and figurative leader. First, a woman, a mother, a woman who speaks to, bringing into existence more members of this 
human family, the African American human family in particular, but a person through history abused, oppressed, denied, much as the bullies in the 1700s who gathered in Philadelphia to pull together a constitution speaking to justice and democracy, but denying to women, denying to African Americans. Oh, we were there. But the denial of our presence is then, as the denial of our presence and our rights continue to this very day. We're in Vermont. That motto says freedom and unity. But if we have freedom and unity, how can you have it if you deny the people who look like those who are here, who are part of the majority who populate planet Earth? Think of that when someone looks at someone like me or like Reverend Mark or like our executive director, Christine, and as I call, and especially our children. We're part of a mighty, we're not a minority. We will not be denied, be denied. We forevermore will keep going on because our right and we are charged to do the right thing. So help us God, amen. amen. I just wanted to do that again. So um, there are some um, some housekeeping things I wanted to run by you. We're almost to the close of this. Um, for those of you who haven't, who thought this may not may have not gone so long, we've been waiting for 400 years. So we're going to take our time. If you need to go, then we understand. Uh, but we're going to keep the fight. Uh, so definitely, um, there, it is important to understand that the. We still have free tickets that are available, uh, that are out there. Uh, last check, I think we had like over 220 people uh, registered, uh, signed up. For that. Yeah. 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 Pretty squirrely, there's a lot of stuff going on. I uh, wanted to also mention uh, that uh, there's going to be food and music and dancing and speakers and exhibits, and there's going to be a youth home base. Yes. That's going to be in the barn. So if you're watching this and you're a youth and you're not there, shame on you because they're going to talk about you. Um, the legendary Bobby Hackney is going to be there. I said the legendary Bobby Hackney is going to be there. Um, keynote speaker. Uh, I just got off the phone with her today. The, our own Dr. Wanda Heading Grant. Uh, for her second time, she's, she's, she's actually delivered the keynote before, but you weren't watching then. Uh, but it's okay. We're going to continue to do this. Uh, and then also here in the Richard Kemp Center, I'm so excited to say this. So, <laughs> so here in the Richard Kemp Center, uh, what we have uh, going on is, is we have the, um, the African American History uh, Wall, which is, which is already erected and it's, it's developing. It's a work in progress. And that's amazing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And then there's also the, um, there's going to be some local African American cultural and art exhibits as well. You see, like some already starting to go up here in the center, so there there will be that going on. And of course, there will also be the 1619 traveling exhibit, which is yes. right behind us here. Uh, so, so, we'll, so this will be on display. At the same time, there will be transportation that's taking folks from here down there and down there, up here. So all of that uh, will be going on at the same time. Again, tickets are available and they are free. Um, I do have one community partner that's here with us. And I know that Annette is very new to CHT, but she's also one of our very own uh, and maybe not necessarily eager to have a word with you all, but with some coaching, we could probably get her up <laughs> to say a few words for us, Annette. Annette. Good morning, ladies. <laughs> um, my name is Antoinette Bennett-Jones. I wear multiple hats in the community. As a community member, I am excited about First African Landing Day. 
I hope you all are able to join us, and I look forward to helping make this change in our community, which is well overdue. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, um, how do you spell your last name? Yeah. Julie, it's Julie. Good. 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 Um, I have I have one of my favorite senators here uh, with us, and we we did just so you know. Um, in addition to all of the signatures of the racism is a public health emergency, which includes every single one of the thirty that's here within this community, to include the city, um, the the um, Chittenden County Regional Planning, the hospital. Um, Community Opportunities Credit Union, the list goes on. You all have those. Those of you in the press, you have those because we did this. Remember, in 2020, we did this. So all of those were invited, and so were many, many, many others to include um, a vast array of uh, elected uh, officials, including you know everybody from the leadership uh, all the way on down. So we are not uh, absent people here for lack of our outward communicating, uh, but, but we are still... Uh, standing, and we're still doing the work. So uh, we're, we don't want to shame them out, but we do want to call them in because uh, this is where it's happening uh, this weekend. Um, so um, I am really um, proud to say that we did get a taker, no less from the Senate of the uh, of Vermont uh, uh, General Assembly. So let me just uh, briefly introduce. Uh, who has someone who's been an ally with the work that we're doing, uh, Senator? Uh, I'm going to mess it up, Julie. Thank you. Right. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm a little reluctant to speak because white people often speak for and speak over folks of color, so I, I'm going to keep it really short. Um, but I'm so honored to be here. Um, it's, it means a lot to me to be invited, and I'm so thrilled that I could make it. Um, I am also on the Burlington School Board, some of you know, as well as in the Senate, and I'm so thankful to Sparks for being here today and our students. Um, they do incredible work, and Superintendent Flanagan was here as well. Um, so, you know, Nicole Hannah-Jones is a hero of mine, and her work is incredibly important and vital to our whole country. Um, and she also has done a lot of work about public education. So those of you who know her for her 1619 project, I would urge you to try to listen up and read some of the work that she's done around public education. It's really important. Um, it is in some ways in our country we are more segregated than we've ever been before in terms of our education, and that is a big problem. School vouchers, public money going to private schools, these are things we all need to look at. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we um, are so pleased to have had the opportunity to spend uh, the time uh, today with you. We uh, certainly don't um, take this uh, opportunity to get in front of you um, for granted. We just wanted to make sure uh, that you know those, those folks who are across the state, that they're having an opportunity to see uh, what it is that is happening. There is a, a, um, a tectonic shift that's happening. Um, not just across this nation, but across this planet right now. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. There's, there's a lot of things that are happening right now. I think those of us, uh, especially um, those who are ascribed to the traditions of, of faith, um, are, we're buckling down, we're, we're standing strong. Um, but I think in particular, when we start to think about um, these things that are being unearthed, these facts, these, these, um, this information, that's being made uh, readily available to us. We can no longer hide behind objectivity. We can no longer um, make a decision uh, to uh, hide in uh, cognitive dissonance because uh, what we're experiencing is real. Uh, so uh, we are on the move. We're going to continue to do uh, this work. Uh, 1619 Project was uh, mentioned. Yes, uh, we are. Um, rooted in this, these facts, the, this is, um, the academy is already um, 
has already finalized its analysis on the research involved uh, in this project. Uh, the the uh, reluctance is not the academy. The reluctance is the community. And the reluctance is the, the, the politicization of what it is that we're talking about. But the academy has already settled uh, in the facts concerning who we are as a nation and where we've come from. So the disconnect that you're experiencing, if, if anything, has more to do with the fact that you haven't academically engaged in what it is that we're talking about. Because the facts bear out what it is we're talking about with this uh, first African lady. Besides, Nicole Hannah Jones and I are from the same hometown, so you can't, you can't go wrong with that, okay? So um, we thank you for coming out uh, together. Uh, we navigate through the fire, um, guided by wisdom of those who have come before us and inspired by the potential of those who will follow us. We're not alone in this journey. We are a collective force, bound together by the threads of our shared history and the people for a better future. Through the fire, we emerge as warriors fighting for justice, equality, in a world where we can all thrive. In our pursuit of a brighter tomorrow, we stand unwavering and unturned. We march forward with the conviction that the moral arc of the universe bends towards justice. And it's our duty to shape that arc with our unwavering determination. Our struggles have and will continue to strengthen us, fortifying our spirit and driving us towards a future where equality and opportunity abound. Through the fire, we rise, transcending the limitations imposed upon us. We are a testament to the power of resilience, the beauty of unity, and the boundless strength that resides within each and every one of us. Our story is one of triumph over adversity. And as we, as we forge ahead, we carry with us the knowledge that our journey is not just for us, but for the liberation of all. Thank you, and good afternoon. You had a good plug for tomorrow's event, but I think our viewers, our readers, might benefit from hearing a little more about the tone of the event, because when we talk about the legacy of slavery, obviously slavery is, I think most sane people would agree, is the most shameful stain on our country's history. I don't want people to think this event is going to be a downer. So talk maybe a little bit about what they can, can expect in terms. You can do yeah, whatever, whatever. Whoever. We can we can we can do a round robin. Yeah, keep it up. Um, but here, here's um here's here's what um the um my my initial response to that is is that um that's that's very typical uh, a, a, a question and it's very predictable in terms of um a a a, a question of a, um, a privileged white reporter who um, is living steeped in, in that privilege. Um, so I think the challenge with propagating and disseminating the information surrounding our true history has been, um, it's been allegedly at the expense of the comfortability of white people. Uh, so my response and I will speak as a minister, as Mark Hughes, but also as the executive director of Vermont Racial Justice Alliance, is, is that you know there is a choice, there is a decision that we all must make when we determine whether we want to be a part of 
And I think it was the last sentence that I said, maybe, maybe, maybe it wasn't, maybe people didn't pick up on it, but it says, it says that our story is one of triumph over adversity, and we forge ahead, we carry with us knowledge that our journey is not just for us. I just said this a minute ago, but for the liberation of all. Oh. So if Somebody who is white and steeped in their privilege can't hear that. We'll keep saying it. But I guess, I guess, what I'm struggling with, um, this is an event for us, for black people. So how can anybody ask a question as we think about our liberation, our freedom, and who we are as black people to say, is it going to be a downer event? Nothing we do for us is a downer event. When white folks took over the, the, when white folks took over the mall, I never heard anybody calling that a downer event when they were trying to take over democracy. But here we are as black people in one of the whitest states in the nation doing something for us, our legacy, our children. And as Mark said, for everybody. So for anybody to ask the question, is it going to be a downer event? I don't even know what that means. Because again, to be perfectly clear, there's nothing we do for us, by us, that's a downer event. Everything that we do for us is to lift us up, to help us to above folks that think that we do things for us, that's going to be a downer event. I find that question humiliating. I apologize. I wasn't, that, I, I think I might No, 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 been... not just from you, from anybody. But how many people are saying, is this going to be one of those events where black folks are going to get together and have a good time? Damn right. Yes, we are. We're going to get together, and we're going to sing, we're going to dance, we're going to eat, and we're going to have a good time. We're going to also talk to folks about all the things that they do to help keep us down. We are going to rise up, as Mark said, whether folks like it, whether folks are ready for it or not. We are here, and we're not going anywhere. Anybody else have anything to say to that question? Um, Sounds like you got everybody stirred up. Let's get, this, let's get after this. My response to the question is, it's a space for us to feel empowered, which we haven't felt in a long time. And it's also an environment for any allies or anyone that wants to know the history of 1619 and the history of black Americans, um, African Americans, uh, to join us. and. As Spark said, we're going to celebrate as we know how. And we just encourage everyone to join us if you want to learn more about your, your our history. When I said predictable, I think that, you know, we would be, you know, we would be kind of naive if, if we didn't acknowledge the fact that the you know, all of the so-called cultural wars are tied up into the premise upon which this is actually founded intentionally. Because our culture is American culture. That's right. So when you start talking about so-called critical race theory, okay, when you start talking about that, any engagement in that as an argument assumes that systemic racism, the legacy of slavery, does not exist. Be but if, if, if systemic racism, this, the legacy of slavery, does exist, then as critical as it is, and as much about race as it is, it ain't no theory. And there is something that we need to teach our children and teach one another about this country that previously was not known. And it will be undergirded, undergirded with the empirical and the quantitative data that consistently and insidiously and simultaneously communicates the disparities 
that are being produced through all systems, all social determinants of health at the same time. So really what we're talking about here with this commemoration is, is an acknowledgement of an unearthing of something that we previously did not know and what, even though academically it was, it was, um, it was supported, probably it's been supported for about 40 years. As I said earlier, there's a disconnect in our knowledge that we have across our communities, and that is not by that is not by accident. But now, what we have more than ever because of Nicole, because of the 1619 Project, because of the 400-year African American History um, uh, Commission, and because of many other works, what we're seeing here is a validation of the academy, as they've been speaking for decades. Uh, so this is an opportunity for us in Vermont as our governor proclaimed to say that the fourth, the fourth Saturday of August for in perpetuity is indeed uh, First African Landing Day. So, um, here's, so here's the thing. Um, I expected this. <laughs> Be because I think that the thing here is, is that we, you know, we, we're, not, we're not devoid of the fact that there's a conversation going on all around us, and even here in the so-called white liberal progressive state of Vermont. Uh, was there another response to that previous question, or was there another? Okay. okay. Hi, that was a very intriguing question. My name is Omega Jade, here's my answer. Tomorrow is a celebration of the fact that August 20th, 1619, if it wasn't for that day, we wouldn't be here. And for 400 plus years, we've been made to feel like an out of place entity in a country that we, our ancestors built. <gasps> this year, we're not hiding. This year, we're celebrating our place here. And for me personally, this is an even more personal celebration for me simply because I recently went on my own self-discovery, finding out my genealogy through a DNA test and found out all the different places in Africa that I am from and my, technically my place in where my ancestors were in the transatlantic slave trade. If it, that, ha, that alone was an eye-opening experience for me. I get to celebrate this knowing the things I learned about myself, my family, and pass that on to my kids. Not only is this a learning situation, this is a way to come fellowship, have a plea, learn about some different cultural cuisines. You may even learn, listen to some music that, you know, is hip hop, but we'll teach you something. I'll do that. <laughs> okay. I'll be very quick. Roy B. Hill, second. <clears throat> Some of you know that not only am I affiliated with the faith community, but also my wife and I introduced Juneteenth here in the state that became the 29th state that had a Juneteenth holiday. When we were going forth to educate them, that is truth. Not for the skill of truth, we are not a faithful, particular skill of the truth. We were confronted by a white woman running down church student saying, what is this Juneteenth? Never heard of it. I know everything about black people, and I don't know anything about Juneteenth. At that time, 28 states lifted up Juneteenth, celebration from the oppression of slavery, last vintage of officially acknowledged of slavery. I say officially acknowledged because when we moved from Tennessee, <clears throat> where with the passage of the 1954 Supreme Court decision, white people were offended, they were afraid 
They didn't want black people to learn to read and write, especially in schools that had the equipment that they were making available for whites. So I'm saying that this is liberating. A lot of white folk were fearful of the truth. We move beyond that. Two liberates. And then we can all do that thing that we're endowed and empowered to do to make a difference for our children, for our community, and by extension, our country. It's now in the process of trying to be elected. But we won't go there. <laughs> I think we've gone as far as we can go. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, we've got a great day planned ahead of us. Now, even as we speak, uh, uh, you know, our production company is dropping the staging in down over at Intervale. So, for those of you who are uh, still covering this, you might want to go down and take a look at that because you can see things uh, developing down there. Um, during that time, will also be uh, the youth will begin um, in here in the next couple hours. Y'all, I know y'all are going to begin. Moving that all of that stuff down there and getting set up, so I'm excited about that. Um, for for those of you who are still in the neighborhood tonight or might want to come back, of course, Christine had mentioned uh, that this evening uh, there is again a, a youth movie night as we do with the second and fourth Thursday. So, um, what will be happening Friday? What will be happening at the same time is. Um, uh, during during that, at the beginning of that, is, is I, I had shown I had shared with you earlier uh, the 1619 project, and that the I, I believe it's uh, Born on the Water, Born on the Water uh, is the um, is the youth version of that. We will be doing that tonight. So if, if um so if there's some fragility in the house and, and people are nervous about that, you know we're happy to explain that to you before you come. Um, but um, there'll be a, a showing of Wakanda forever after that. So I think um, that, that's going to be the day tomorrow. We'll get up early in the morning. Those of us will, will be setting up down there. Um, maybe um, some of the press might want to come down here and have more conversations with some of, some of the folks. Um, we'll, we'll start at 11 a.m. Uh, the the uh, home, home base is going to be rocking all day long. Uh, the stage is going to be running hot all day long. Uh, there's going to be, we've invited vendors from across the state, black, white, yellow, red, green, purple. Everybody's going to be there setting up. <laughs> Uh, and they're going to be tabling, doing all of the stuff. Uh, there's going to be food there that will blow your mind. Uh, so if you, if you don't know how to behave, then don't come and eat uh, because you will lose your mind uh, with the food that we're going to have with some ethnic, ethnic cuisine. Uh, again, um, there is a wellness area that's going to be out there. So if you, if you come and you kind of wound up, you know, because this is stressful, um, maybe you might want to get a massage or do some yoga or something like that. Maybe get your hair cut. Uh, so come on down uh, tomorrow for those who are, who've come out today. I, I thank you very much, and I'm just going to conclude where we are. And we're so happy that you come out. And don't forget, we're not stuck in the fire. We're going through it.